I've been swimming all of my life. Um, I've always really, really loved the water. Um, water's always been a place where I can feel calm and centred and it's been very positive for me since I was about four or five. I was really quite a good kind of club swimmer. I wasn't as good as I hoped to be. I aspired to go to the Olympics and be a champion, but I didn't have that much talent. Um, I developed some neck and back problems, and as a result of those neck and back problems, a friend of mine re recommended that I took up the Alexander technique. The Alexander technique is all about how to use your body more effectively. Now you will see him turn and demonstrate his ability to squat. So over the last 25 years, I've been developing what has become now the Shaw method of swimming. And the Shaw method applies Alexander principles to, to movement. To understand the movements, it's often very good to start on dry land because people can... So let's go through, I'll demonstrate some... Move, they're moved outside of their habits. As soon as they get into the water, their bodies are conditioned to move in a particular way. So when you take them out of the water and you start to explore the movements that you want them to do in the water, they learn much quicker. The Shaw method is based on four main principles. The first principle is that body alignment is a key factor in affecting your performance when we move and when we swim. So the relationship between our head, neck and back is key to affecting our performance. You're doing really well if you step forward again for me. You're opening out this area in your back yeah. very well. So it's all about this area here spreading. Yeah. And then when you come over, it's about letting the chest relax and soften. The second principle is called smart swimming. So if you look at a really good swimmer swimming any stroke, they look powerful, graceful, effortless. It's almost like before you know the on switch, you have to discover the off switch. And people find it harder to release than they are to apply effort. Look forward. When you get this ebb and flow, the release and the power into the movement, it starts to feel much more integrated, much more organic, much more holistic, and you feel the connection with the water in a different way. Look up towards me, and then we hold it. Good. Should we practice this in the water, yeah? Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, good. What we'll do is just start off um, thinking about your alignment. The third principle is about respiration. And the problem with most people in the way that they swim is they focus too much on breathing in and not enough on controlling the out-breath. So what we work on is focusing on the out-breath, allowing the in-breath to do itself. Round towards the jacuzzi and coast and then hold the tiger. Yep. Yep. You ready for it? Yep. So we're okay. going to do eyes down. Down at the floor. Forward to me. Turn. So once the breathing is no longer an issue, you can let go and become one with the water. So from the Alexander technique, I'd learned that doing hands-on guidance, moving people in the water, significantly helped them release tension. And if I could help people release some of the tension, particularly in their neck and back, maybe they could move more easily. Good, how did that feel? Yeah, much better, thank you. Breathing was easier, yeah? A lot easier. More room. Much more room, yeah, yeah. Feels good, actually, stretching out. Opening out the chest, yeah. yeah. And then softening as you come back. I think I still need a bit of practice. No, but it's really improved. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. See you soon. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Take care. Thanks. Several years ago, I met a woman called Mandy Hudson who had cerebral palsy. 
She was someone that was very comfortable in the water. She'd always been in the water, but she had a lot of restricted movement because of the cerebral palsy. As a result of applying this work, she was able to really develop a different connection with the water. I think swimming is pure pleasure. And so I think the, re the reason why I've invested so much time, energy and, even mo and money even into this, into this technique is because it, it builds on that pleasure. I work with a lot of people that are swimming teachers and many of them, the last thing that they'd like to do is go to the pool because it's their work. But for me, being in the water is very, very important. It gives me a sense of calmness. It uh, revitalizes me. So for me, swimming is almost like um, coming home. <laughs>